with this aria. I love it. I want to marry it and have children with it. Good morning, good evening, good night, wherever you are, welcome. I'm not sure whether I'm a huge fan of Verdi's opera Un Ballo in Mascara. I like his earlier works better like Hernani or Imas Nadieri and of course Macbeth. Those early operas were very archaic, simple and driven by an almost animal-like rhythm. After that came the three huge successes Rigoletto, Traviata and Il Trovatore, with Trovatore being the weakest of those three, I think. And the operas following Trovatore were like Trovatore itself. Fantastic musical numbers, but from a psychological and a dramatic point of view, not very convincing in my opinion. I'm talking about I Vespri Siciliani, La Forza del Destino and, you guessed it, Ballo in Mascara. But Renato's aria, Eri Tu, is perfection. Yeah, it's, perf it's perfect. It's perfect. All right, that's all I can say. It's perfect. Okay, join me next time. And until then, please take care. Ciao. <laughs> I want to say some more things. Eri Tu has the most thrilling and touching music, but what in addition makes this aria so exceptional is the rawness of Renato's hurt masculinity, his vulnerability. One can almost sense that Eri Tu is a kind of precursor of Otello's aria Dio mi potevi scagliar. And Otello is not too bad of an opera, is it? For those who do not know what this aria is about, in Eri Tu, Renato deals with the presumed extramarital affair of his wife with his best friend. In the context of this video, it's not important if they had an actual affair, if they did the coitus thing or not. They didn't. Important is only that Renato believes they did. And we, thanks to Verdi, can witness how he in his aria is dealing with his feelings of betrayal, loss, anger, love. It's a true roller coaster. So join me and let's watch together the unforgettable Dmitri Harastovsky performing this aria in 2012. Link in the description below. Wow, first of all, have you seen his neck? That's the neck of a heavyweight boxer or a Formula One driver. Mamma mia. And the sad and very quiet way he is sending away Amelia, Amelia is very atypical. Atypical but great. Most baritones are very harsh here. Toscondi, but not Harastovsky. One can feel the pain he is in and it becomes clearly visible when he averts his eyes away from the exiting Amelia. <laughs> I like that he stays sitting. Very often you see Renato being very active and strong when singing this, but 
I think it's better this way. Renato is still kind of frozen by all these contradicting emotions he's experiencing at this moment, trying to collect himself until it becomes unbearable and he has to get up like he's doing in a moment. <laughs> This is interesting. He feels betrayed by two people he loves and he has to make a decision whom to blame. Since he doesn't want to think bad about his wife, Amelia, he directs his anger towards Ricardo, his friend, who is still so close to his heart. <laughs> Another great moment. He's speaking about his tears, delle lacrime mie, delle lacrime mie. So obviously he's hurting really bad. His reaction as a man is, I can't cry. Instead, he is turning towards aggression. <laughs> noticed how he stopped for a second before ripping off the photo from the wall and leaning his forehead against the picture of his dearest friend? Throughout the aria, Harostovsky illustrates with those little gestures what's going on in his soul and that's really remarkable because this aria is so freaking difficult to sing that most baritones just give up acting and are focusing on producing the voice. I don't want to show negative examples of this, but if you go to YouTube, you will find that all Renatos are just singing. Horstovsky is making a real effort here to show that you can do both the singing and the acting. It's not always perfect, but who cares about perfection? I don't want to sound too philosophical, but aren't we rather captured by the most beautiful imperfections? What a sensational moment in the music here. Renato is talking about his friend who has betrayed him and he sings in the softest and sweetest tone. One could expect him to sound angry, but no, one can feel the love he still has for his friend. And again, not trying to overinterpret here, but maybe keep in mind that the historic figure this, this opera is based on was the Swedish king Gustav III, who supposedly was bisexual. So it's not a far stretch to imagine that there was a romantic component to Renato's and Ricardo's friendship. 
Another clue for this might be that this tender melody about his friend transforms seamlessly into the sweetest melody he will be singing about Amelia, his wife. Let's listen to this one more time. <laughs> So beautiful and deeply touching these few bars when the flute plays together with the orchestra. But if you indulge me for a moment, this mini interlude sounds as gorgeous when played on the piano. Listen to this young woman playing these few magical bars. Isn't it beautiful? But now back to Arostovsky. <laughs> Jesus Christ, what a lung capacity this man had, singing this very long phrase in one single breath. He would have been a great diver, I guess. And now, with the modified repetition of the last phrase, we enter the final part of this aria. Again, a wild mixture of emotions from hunger for revenge to deepest, deepest sadness about two lost loves. Oh, <laughs> 
And be honest, is there a better aria for baritone out there in the opera universe? I doubt it, but write me in the comments your alternative and maybe in the future I will make a video about it and prove to you how wrong you are or how right. Well, we shall see. Anyway, that's it for today. Thanks for watching, guys. If you liked it, well, you know what to do. Hint, it has to do with certain like and or subscribe buttons, but that's all I'm saying. And I hope to see you again next time. Until then, Please take care and ciao.